Welcome back to the arcade. Today we're going to do something a little different, but it's still, in a way, arcade related. Um, I've been looking on eBay for some certain items, and one came up, and I decided to take a chance on it. So, I bid on it, and I got it, and the bid was $86.55. But the kicker was they wanted $31 for shipping. And with tax, it all came to $122.74. And the item is unknown condition. So I don't know if it's even going to be worth my while to mess with. But let's open it up and uh, see what it is. Now this is the way it came. It came FedEx. And as you can see, this is the bottom of the box. And this, I didn't use very good packing tape on it. So, uh, hopefully, I see packing peanuts in there. So, hopefully, it's supposed to be in there, what's in, what's in there. So, I haven't opened it up yet. So, we'll discover together whether it is or not. And I don't know the... Uh, condition of the unit. I don't even know how complete it is. All I do know is the screws aren't in it so you can take it apart just, just like it is. Okay, packing peanuts. Well, packing peanuts can be a real mess. Try to keep them in the box here. Any guesses so far? I'm going to try to rake some of these peanuts down here in the hole. I'll give you a hint. This came out on the market. Actually, it was supposed to come out in 1977, but I think it was delayed until 1978. All right. Let me set it down here and see if I can't. That's, that should be it. I don't think it's anything else in the box, but I'll go through the box later to make double sure, but I don't think it came with any accessories. And it was listed as parts only. Any guesses? No, it's not a VCR. It is. Dun 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 dun! A Bally computer system. So this is one of the original first. Uh, when they called it the Bally computer system, uh, this this was the one that you could only get it through mail order, and this was the one that was released in 1977, but it was delayed to 1978. Uh, I believe these, when they were new, cost about, gosh, I think I read they were $299. I'll have, to, I'll have to check on that. Okay. Well, in case you didn't know, even though it says it's a computer system, it's basically a game console. Uh, the reason they marketed it as a computer system it's because it has this number keypad here, and it actually you could get a uh, a cartridge 
that had basic, uh, so you could do basic programming with it. And they were supposed to come out with a uh, an add-on unit that plugged in, that sat underneath this, and plugged into it, and had a computer keyboard in front of it. But I have seen a picture of one, but I don't know if it's just a prototype. I don't know if they ever really came out with them, or how many were made. But uh, anyway, uh, this system right here, uh, back in the day, a buddy of mine had one, and he loved the thing. Uh, of course, if you hadn't don't know already, since it's Bally, uh, this is the base system that the arcade games like the uh, the rack system, Bally Midway, like Gorf, Wizard of War, Robbie Roto, and all those uh, type games are, are based the hardware in this. Is pretty much identical to what's in the arcade game, although it's kind of a scaled down version. Or maybe the arcade game is a scaled up version. But anyway, so this come with a uh, power supply here, which is hardwired to the unit. You can't take it off. That's why it's still with it. And this is the RF output, which plugs into the little uh, TV switch, if you remember the old games like the Atari 2600 had it, which by the way, the Atari 600 came out about the same time this did, I believe. This might have predated the 2600 by a year, but because of the, the uh, problem they had in getting it released, I'm not exactly sure but which one actually came out first, but anyway. Uh, this is all that came with it, so I, I don't have the switch, so I can't hook it up to a TV. I probably got one around here somewhere boxed away, but I, I don't know where it is. Okay, let's have a look inside. Like I said, this uh, thing came with no screws in it. It's supposed to be, they tested it, and it doesn't work. Um... The only thing I can think of is, unless the custom chips are bad, that uh, maybe the power supply is bad. Uh, I've read that quite a few of them have bad power supplies. And I believe it's got four different types of voltage regulators. A 5 volt, a negative 5 volt, I think a 10 volt. I'm not sure what the fourth one is, but I know it's four of them and they're right, right here in this area right here. Anyway, let's see if we can get this off. Okay, it looks like the shield here, all the solder joints are busted except for one. So, let me go ahead and heat this up and see if we can get it off. There we go. Lay that down here. Okay. Well, we definitely have all three of the custom chips are in here. Uh, let's see. This one right here, 0066. 117. That's the custom I.O. chip right here. Uh, the custom I.O. chip. Oh, let's see, that goes on the uh, the Gorf Logic Board. Now the Gorf Logic Board has two I.O. chips, but uh, this system only has one, so you're only getting one chip. But it does have the other two custom chips. This one here is... I have to get my magnifying glasses on. The writing small on this one. 0066-115. So this one is the uh, 
the custom address chip which goes on the CPU board on the GORF. So this one under here it's got a heat sink on it. That's got to be the uh, the custom data chip. The 0066116. Okay, because that's the one that has the uh, the heat sink on the GORF board. Alright. Well, first, these chips are socketed, so that's a plus. Here's the CPU, the Z80. That one's not socketed. So if you want that one, you have to unsolder it, but I don't need uh, Z80. As a matter of fact, since these chips are, are uh, soldered in, if we find out that these chips are good, that probably means that this, this console works. It just probably has a power supply problem, so I can probably go back and uh, check that out and check the power supply out. And if the power supply is bad, it can be fixed. And uh, if anybody ever remakes uh, these custom chips, we could theoretically put this unit back into uh, service. Of course, we don't know if these chips are, are good or bad yet. So uh, we're going to find out, though. They're socketed, so we're going to pull them out of the sockets, and we're going to put them in a GORF board and find out if they work. So it always makes me nervous when I do anything with these custom chips. Of course, these aren't rusted, so there's no rusted legs, so that came out good. You, a lot of times on uh, the arcade games, since the games were stored, you know, like in a humid area, the, the legs will be rotten, rusted and rotten. Going to be real careful with them. Okay, that looks good. Now let's see if we can get this other chip out. It's underneath the uh, the keypad here. All right, the, the keypad has this board right here, and it's hardwired and soldered to the. Uh, the board here but it's enough room here where we ought to be able to bend it up so let's be real careful here and just lay it back okay good I think we got enough room to get it out Okay, all the legs look good on that too. Yeah, right here, it looks like this is the uh, four voltage regulators. Uh, three of them have heat sinks, and one of them doesn't have a heat sink. I'd be willing to bet the one without the heat sink is probably the negative five volts. This one here with the bigger heat sink is probably the plus 5 volts. And one of these is 10 volt and I'm not I don't remember what the voltage is for the other one. I remember reading about it but I'd have to look it over. Matter of fact, I I was able to find the manual on this and I've I've downloaded the manual and I did print out the uh, page here that shows the layout of the board and all the chips. So I had them uh, already figured out here that this one is the custom I.O. That's the custom address and that's the custom data chip. So anyway, all right. Well, we got them out. So let me put this back down. And I'm just going to Stick this back together. 
Not going to solder it back in or anything. Just want to keep it all together in case I ever do decide to go back and uh, do something with it and get it working again. It would be neat to kind of play around with, but uh, if the chips are good, we're going to use the chips to help bring another golf board back together. So, alright, well, let me go ahead and put this away and then we'll uh, see about getting the golf boards and uh, put the chips in them and find out if they work. Okay, we're going to start out with the uh, the Gorf CPU board. And if you remember, a few videos ago, I was testing some Gorf boards. I had three sets of complete sets of Gorf boards in various state of disarray, and I tested all of them. Even though I I didn't test them all on camera, I did go through and test every board. For all three sets and I started out with the RAM boards and if you remember we found two RAM boards that were bad uh, well that had bad RAM some of them had uh, bad tantium capacitors but we replaced all the bad tantium capacitors on all the boards and we finally did get those uh, two RAM boards fixed the last one which is the last video um, All of the RAM chips, what was it, 16 RAM chips on the board? All but one was bad. So anyway, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Okay, um, get back to the CPU boards. The three CPU boards that were in the three board sets, uh, one of them was good. Everything worked fine on it. And so it was a number number of boards. Board number seven was good. Board number eight was bad. The only good chips on it was uh, the Z80 and the this other little chip right here. This is the Z80 and this is, uh, I don't know what chip that is. I think it's just a regular TTL chip, but Anyway, these chips on that board were, were good, but the two customs were bad. Uh, let's see. But it, uh, the board, I put two, two good customs in it, and the board still had problems. It had control issues. Well, I'll have to go back and look at my notes, but that board had problems. This board, number nine, the board is good as far as the board, but the two customs were bad in it. So all this board needs is two good custom chips. And because of this uh, Bally computer system, uh, we got two chips to try in it, which we don't know if they're good or bad. So. Let's go ahead and pull these bad chips off of the GORF board, the GORF CPU board. And that was back in uh, matter of fact, January 1st of 21 is the day I checked these chips and found out they were bad. So it hadn't been too long ago. Okay, now this one right here is the one that should have the heat sink on it. This one did not have a heat sink on it, and there's no signs that a heat sink was ever glued to it. I read somewhere that some of these boards didn't have a heat sink on it. I don't know if that's true or not, but for whatever reason, maybe somebody had switched the one with the heat sink and put one out of another board in it, but this chip is bad. So, we're going to take 
the one that's got the heat sink on it that came out of the console and uh, let's see if we can put this in without messing it up line up the pins okay that sounded good okay now this chip at U3 that's the uh, the custom address chip which is 0066115 so it should be this one right here yep this is it right here because this is the IO chip so we're gonna put that aside because that goes on uh, the other board it don't go on this board okay let's see if I can get this one lined up all the legs look in place okay let's go ahead and pull the board out of the gore if it's in there now and let's put this board in and test it and see if we got any good chips okay well I just pulled this board out of GORF and as you can see GORF has that funky heat sink on it right there this one just got a flat piece of aluminum on it so uh, anyway let's go ahead and put the board in there and test it out okay one little thing as I was putting it in it seems like it, this heat sink is thicker than the one that they use on the golf board so I'm worried that this aluminum might be too close to the board and the rack next to it and it might cause a short so for right now until I figure out something I'm just gonna take a a label and stick a label on top of it and that way it'll insulate it and keep it from shorting out if it does happen to touch anything better safe than sorry okay well I put the uh, board in the card cage so here's the moment of truth cross your fingers and I'll turn it on and let's see if we got anything okay Corf is up now does it work let's take a quarter Good so far. Let's hit player one. It's looking like we got success. I'm not used to playing left-handed. I got the camera in my right hand. Yeah, I know. Excuses, excuses. Okay. Okay, success. Well, sometimes I guess you get lucky, but that's not usually my luck. But I'll take any kind of luck I can get. Okay, let me cut it off. All right, now what are we going to do? Well, we still have one chip to go. The I.O. chip. Now the I.O. chip, 
let's see, that is on the, uh, the game board, what they call the game board. Now, the GORF game board has two I.O. chips. We only have one. But I'll pull the board out of the card cage, and I'll pull. We know both of those chips are good because they're in the game working. So I'll pull one of them out, and I'll replace it with this chip. And if we have a problem, if that chip is bad, it'll show up. So uh, let me go ahead and pull it, and uh, we'll swap chips. Okay. Here's the game board. I just pulled out a GORF. Here are two I.O. chips. Now I'm not sure which is which. They're both identical. Both of these chips are identical. Don't hold me to this, but I believe that one of them primarily controls all the, the input controls from the joystick and the, the coin uh, switches and all that kind of stuff. And I think the other one does the audio, uh, this interface, you know, for the, between the, uh, you know, for the, for the audio, for the sound effects, and I guess even the speech, I don't know. Uh, I do know this, this right here is the SC01 uh, voice synthesizer chip right here. So all of the speech and sound is, is on this board right here. Okay, I think this one right here does the controls, but I'm not 100% sure, but it don't matter. One way or the other, if, if the chip is bad, we're going to know it. So here we go again. I hate pulling out good working custom chips. But hey, it's the only way you're going to find out. Okay, now let me double check. The one I pulled out is the 0066-117. This one here is 0066-117. So that's it. Get the orientation right. Because I'd hate to plug it in backwards and mess it up. And please don't bend the pen. Okay, it's in. Let's put it in the game and try it out. All right, got the board in the card cage. Let's cross the fingers and let's turn it on. Am I going to get lucky again? That's, that's a good start. But that don't mean anything if it does the controls. We'll find out if the controls are working when we start a game. Let's let it go through the track mode here a little bit. Everything's looking good so far. Okay, Mr. Gorf, here comes the coin. Here we go. Okay.
Thorf is such a good game. Very underrated, in my opinion. I'd have to put it up there. In the top ten classics, anyway. If not, the, if not the top five. But everybody's got their opinion. But I just, I just love this game. Keep it, letting the camera get out of frame, I guess. I should have set up the tripod, I guess. Anyway, we're not here to play the game. We're here to test custom chips, and we have a success. We have a winner. All right. Normally don't work out that way. My normal thing is all three of those chips would have been toast. But this time came out. Okay. So. I guess that means I'll have a another working CPU board. So. Uh, that's a plus. And I still have uh think I'm still short one IO chip to get the other board going but I'm closer to it I'll just have to keep my eye open and next time I see a a cheap uh, Astrocade I'll have to you know probably go around might be able to find some in the local thrift stores that'd probably be the, the best thing to do is to look around and try to find them at local flea markets and whatever, even though, yeah, never know. You might run across one. Okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're in need of the custom chips to fix a uh, Bally Midway card system game, well, find yourself a, a Bally Astrocade or computer system. So, I guess I'll end this video right here on a plus note. This has just been another arcade fix. Have you had your arcade fix today?